So there are lots of choices for tracking your run. Uh, you know, you could just use pencil and paper. You could use a watch. You can use one of those fancy smart rings by Aura that are made in Finland. Or you could run with a Casio G-Shock GBD H1000. Let's take a look at it. So the box was... Ah, there it is. There's the box. But who cares about the box when you have the watch? So I just got a notification off YouTube. That's what it looks like. And the watch is nice. I've already shown it to you outdoors. We can stand over here by the sunlight by the window. Visibility is awesome. I'm going to take this bad boy on a run. And we'll see how the stats compare to that of this G-Shock device and the other competitor, the Samsung device. Oh, looks like little got a little video notification there. Yeah. I'm curious to see what happens uh, between these two devices, and I'm wondering how accurate this Casio device really is, and that's what we're going to talk about. Whether or not I recommend this device, and whether or not... It's worth your time, I guess, would be another reason. Yeah, should should you buy this Casio watch, and is it accurate enough for running? Because that's what it's designed for. It has one sport, running mode, and, and that's it. It only does running. Now, I did take it cycling, and it seemed to do just fine, but it really is designed for running. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about it and I'll answer them in, when I get back from my 5K. See you soon, bye. That's the suggestion according to Garmin. We'll see what happens. Okay, the watch is talking to me through my headphones, telling me how fast to run with the right pace. So that's kind of cool. Click the button, it says now receiving, and you can just start running. You don't have to wait for the GPS, but I thought since this video is primarily about this Casio G-Shock, I would let you see how long it takes. So we're outdoor, visibility, amazing, even with direct sunlight. And the watch isn't too heavy, especially if you've been wearing a Phoenix. You know, it stays on my wrist. I really don't think, you know, a lot of people say how heavy these are and whatnot, but for me, it's really not that heavy. Now, the other really cool thing is, even though while you're waiting, you know, you can tie your shoes, which I, uh, which I need to do. Oh, there we go. We got our GPS. So that was, that took a bit and I just used the GPS yesterday. So now we just hit start and we go run. So if you were born more than 40 years ago and you're running with a Garmin, or Casio, or you're just running, don't be afraid to just stop and catch your breath. There is no shame in walking while running. No shame, no shame. Well, I may not be wealthy in monetary terms, but I have the entire track to myself and I didn't have to pay anything. I think I just got lucky. It's sunny. I can breathe. I made myself breakfast. I went to the bathroom by myself. Thumbs up, right, Sarah? And uh, yeah, I got myself ready. I can run up and down stairs. I'm gonna run up and down those stairs in a bit. Life is pretty good. So the heart rate is all over the place. It's 137 on Garmin. Okay, now it's of course spot on, 137, but it was just 10 beats above. 
then it's 10 beats below. I mean, one or two, even up to five beats up or down, I can accept that. But when I compare it to one plus and Garmin, even one plus, one plus appears to be a little more accurate. So when I'm actually running, I get these huge spikes and it's hard for me to record it. You're just gonna have to trust me. Yeah, the huge spikes up or down, it's just really weird. So I, I can't film myself while I'm running. So you're just gonna have to trust me on that. But yeah, it's up or down as much as 15 beats per minute. Uh, I had the same thing happen during the first week. There was an update that Casio pushed out to the uh, G-Shock Move series, and it's been a little better, and I was gonna keep it, but after talking to support, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. That was a lot harder than I thought. Uh, against, Garmin's against Garmin's advice, took my heart rate up to 188, 187, and that felt pretty good, to be honest. I almost went sub seven pace on the quarter mile. And that felt so good, so good. I'm just glad the smog is gone here in Utah and breathing well. So a good measure of your heart rate prowess is how quickly your heart recovers, how quickly you recover. And if you're sprinting and it's 188 and then you walk for a 16th of a mile, let's find out. In less than 90 seconds, my heart rate went from 188 to 132. Now, I, I highly recommend you don't just stop. I always walk around 130. There we go. Let's check Casio, 130. Now, when I was sprinting, I had a second or two to look, and this was saying 187, 188. Looked on my left wrist, 187, 188. 188. And that's the confusing part. It's like, again, the Casio is up and down. You know, if you have the Casio, any of the G-Shock Move series, let me know. Type your uh, feedback in the comments below, and I'd love to chat. I'm gonna talk to Casio support one more time and see about an exchange, or if they still want me to just return it, and they send me a replacement unit, which is an exchange. On a positive note, the TickPods 2 Pro Plus, or is it the TickPods Pro Plus 2, these things, uh, they were awesome today, flawless. There was some slight disconnect for about two or three seconds in the right earpiece, reconnected, no skipping today. It's been awesome, and it's been connected to my uh, Garmin Phoenix the entire time. This is my uh, rabbit today. I bounced on the track while I'm running for a little mind game. I decided to walk one more lap and uh, Garmin beeped and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna check something. It's already calculated my recovery time. It's saying 52 hours? Back in the studio. That was a good workout. Yes, I ran with my shirt off. I apologize to anyone that saw me. Uh, yeah, I'm not that tan. And you can see the contrast in color. Anyway, let's take a look at the stats. I made a product placement error earlier. I said the TickPods Pro Plus. It's the TickPods 2 Pro Plus. So 4.35 miles. This is the Garmin Phoenix 6X Pro Solar. Stop, save. Perceived effort. Well, I did those really hard sprints. I would say that's an eight. How did you feel? Ah, oh, now I need my glasses. Little smiley faces here. Ah, there we go, now I can read it. You know, I felt strong. There we go, well that's cool. Seven, seven. New Running Max record, 190. Yeah, nice, way to go, heart. VO2 Max, fair, 42. Recovery time, 55 hours. Let's get a screenshot of that. So I was right, that wasn't past recovery time, that was my current recovery time. Then we can keep going down, training, okay, that's good. And then since we're filming a video, yep, it's on Do Not Disturb, so just sync through Wi-Fi, awesome. Okay, next, we want to check the battery, 45% seven days, and step count, 10,859 steps. The other cool thing that it has is the My Day screen, so I had well, achieved uh, 79 intensity points in just that one, 
uh, activity. It's been a pretty lazy week. And 41 flights of floors climbed. I climbed, I think, nine or so before the run. So over 30 flights of stairs. Good stats, good stats. And then battery life is just awesome. So I lost 7% battery in a whole day. And there's my solar intensity chart during the run. All right, next we have Casio. You know, I'm just, why, I always forget to take these off. A little sweaty, but it is uh, waterproof. So we can hit stop. Oh, you know what? Sorry, this is what the video is about. So <laughs> let me show you the screen. So we have the split time, very nice. Lap time, uh, ascent, descent, calories, log. Right there in the top, you can see your battery. So I left at six bars and it went down a bar, but it might have been pretty close to a half a bar. So I might have been, uh, yeah, anyway, it's hard to tell. I wish they had the percentage. And next we have, yeah, pace, we did that. Barometric pressure. We have the mark screen. And then if I click lap, we can do that. That's cool. Then if I click down, I get different stuff. Pace, barometric pressure, split time, and so on. And then at any time you can hit stop. That will pause the device, room, as a room, resume. In this case, we'll just hit save. One thing I wish they would have done on this watch is instead of just saying run, made it an activity button and allowed people to use this for more than just running. I think there's a lot of people that would like to buy the Casio Move series, especially this uh, GBD one. However, there are a lot of other sports besides running. So there's the summary. We have the distance, we have the split time, pace, all that fun stuff. And then it goes back to steps. So heart rate, it says I was at 39. It's probably getting it near my finger. Altimeter, and then, so there's the navigation. Then if you go up, you get, there's my VO2 max. Recovery time, 63 hours, which is interesting because Garmin just showed my, rec my recovery time. If we go to training status, so there's my VO2 max. So almost identical to what, interesting, that's good news. So 55 hours recovery time, and this one is showing 63.25. Hmm, I have a little more trust in the Casio now. Very nice. $800, almost 900, 400. Pretty easy choice if this is everything you need. And the design has grown on me. You know, it's just like the design a lot of people don't like the Phoenix. I love it. Love the design. I love the screen. I love that huge real estate. If you want a smaller screen, this one might be for you. And then uh, at any time you do have that glow light. And let me turn off the light. Hey Google, turn off the light. There we go. So now it's a little darker in my office. Now this is a huge pet peeve of mine. So it's at night and you want to scroll through your screens. Wait, the light doesn't stay on. So it needs a ambient light sensor <laughs> to let the watch know that it needs to keep on the end glow. So as you can see, if it's pitch black, that's gonna really, well, it may or may not bother you, but, but I like how it has the different beeps. You can of course turn that off. You just do a long press on the display and now you can adjust home time, alarm time. See, even there it turns off. So now you can turn the beep off operation, notification, all, all on, all off. There we go, setting completed. And a lot of these settings you can adjust within the app as well. So now I can do auto light, I can do duration. Yeah, I have it set to the max of three. Bummer, I thought maybe that would change. One thing that does bug me, let's say you want to put into airplane mode or do not disturb, you have to come in here and just keep scrolling through all these pages, then choose airplane mode and then say on. I mean, that just took a lot. Whereas with Garmin, they have the control wheel, long press, boom, I'm in airplane mode. And then to go out, it's just that easy as well. Now I'm off airplane mode or I can quickly go into do not uh, disturb mode as well. Turn it on, turn it off, all that fun stuff. I can even quickly go into battery saver mode. 
and the other watches have that too. So this is similar price range. This is the Garmin Instinct Solar. It was also 400. I got it on sale for 300. I don't know, a lot of people say that this was Garmin's attempt to compete against the G-Shock and I would concur if you look at them. This is smaller, screen's a little bigger. They both have excellent solar panels. I did a test. This one will charge, well, many tests actually. This one with that large outer perimeter solar panel will charge at about 5% per hour. This one charges, actually, correct, sorry, maybe 3 to 4% per hour. This one charges about 5% per hour. So amazing that it can charge that fast. There you go. Garmin G-Shock, Casio G-Shock. So what else I like about this? I like that it has the beeping. It's kind of old school. It has alarms. It has all that fun stuff. Again, long press on the display. And then if you scroll down, you can do world time, alarm. So I'll adjust the alarm and you can hear how loud it gets. So it says alarm one on. So there are alarm snooze. Okay, awesome. We hold this down. Nope, you have to press it. That's lame. A lot of clicking. So we'll set this to 14, 20. There we go. So now we'll get an alarm in just a few minutes. About 30 seconds to be exact. So it has the recovery time. I really like that. I like the heart rate graph. And then there is the app, of course, which is quite intuitive. I have mine synced to this one. This is the OnePlus 9 Pro, but it would also sync to the iPhone. You just want to download this app right here, the G-Shock Move app. Make sure you download the G-Shock Move app. And then as soon as you open that, you get the cool splash screen. And then of course you have all of your cool stats as well. So right now it's trying to synchronize. Sometimes it doesn't synchronize, so I'll show you a trick. I'll probably make a video on this. Oh, it's in airplane mode, that's right. So to turn off airplane mode, long press. Keep on going down until you see airplane. Turn that off. And then if you want to force pairing, you just choose pairing and say connect. And that will force the watch to connect with your phone. There we go. Transferring data, just like that. So it shows my last activity. So it's synchronized in the background. Distance, anaerobic training effort. So I can do sea activity details. There's the map, average pace, energy consumption, total ascent, descent, max elevation, etc., etc. And then we have hard effort, moderate, light, very light, heart rate. There's the training effect. And here's the chart, which is kind of cool. They made it so you can do a long press on the graph and get all the stats. And then you can change to show distance. You can punch in heart rate. And then, you know, right there you can, so that's, that's nice. The app is getting better. You can do a memo. So I'm gonna say track run and then see lap details. So here's all my laps and distance. So it's not doing auto lap. I must have messed up and it only did two laps for me. That's interesting. Oh, and then it also has a plan. Predicted time, 29. Based on your run, it is estimated that you could complete a 5K race in 29 minutes. Check plan. And then it lets you know when you should go running. So very cool that they did that. Garmin has some coaching like that. Apple does not. Samsung might. I'll have to look into that. But the app's pretty good, and you can click on more, and those are all your settings. And then right here we have our steps for the day. So I've completed that. Calories, total distance activity. There's my VO2 max score, which is right on par with Garmin. Distance attained, total time, achievements. So, you know, little brownie points here. Train 30 minutes. So I have a goal of 1 million steps, and that's how far I am. Burn 5,000 calories. Very cool. They're, they're getting there. I'll, I'll be honest, though. I, I think the app still needs quite a bit of work. It's just... I feel it's a little difficult to navigate. That, that's what I'll say. It's not quite smooth and refined, but then again, it's, it's new. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So we've looked at those stats and I'll document them. And we have the Aura Ring. So for that, this is a little interesting. You just open up the app 
and then it will synchronize. And then what you want to do is you want to look on one of your other devices and find the start time and end time, and then you plug that into the app. And I'll show you how to do that. So as far as the order ring, it's going to give you the activity goal. It's not going to show that I ran until I put in here and I do an add workout. And I already got the time off the devices, 1226, hour and 12 minutes. So then I just go running, start time, 1226, OK, hour and 12 minutes, click OK, and done. So now it just bumped up with the calories and for that activity, it gave me 741 calories. Intensity, I'm gonna say it was hard because I did sprints. Whoa, okay, and it gave me 1,000 calories, which is interesting. If we go to Garmin, 600 calories. Maybe it was more moderate. <laughs> so let's change that to moderate, 741. Yeah, we'll say that. To do that, I only sprinted for a quarter of a mile. Fun app, I have other reviews on that. So now we have the steps. Just for fun, I wore my compression socks and I put the Apple Watch in my left one and I put the, ouch, that was not that comfortable, <laughs> the Galaxy Watch in my right compression sock. Don't ask me why, it's a long story. So now we have to Turn off the water lock, eject all that sweat and dust, and then we can look at the stats to see 10,000 steps. Did I complete my remove rings? Almost. I just need to stand for a few more hours. Sweet. Okay, let's try Samsung. Shake the water. Yep, I did that. Thanks. 5,000. Huh. That's weird. Why didn't I get more steps? Okay, so I need to go into the app and tell this was running. So it did auto detect. It's just weird that it didn't detect more steps. Hmm, that's really strange because everything else did. Yeah, Apple detected 10,778. So weird, Samsung. Well, Casio did a better job today than Samsung. Go figure. Hmm. Hey Logan, we're in the car and we are wrapping up the video for the Casio G-Shock GBD H1000. I know, it's, it's a lot to say. What do you think about the watch, Paramount? Great. Yeah. So he, he's wearing it for me this afternoon after my run. I needed to uh, detox from all the tech and I wanted to get back to the Galaxy Watch 4 and my other one the Apple Watch 6. But what do you think of Casio so far, Paramount? Great, Game? but is this video sponsored by Casio or are you affiliated with Casio? No, no, I'm not. Because I... they will watch it at the same time you do. Yes. So I'm gonna show you how it looks on his wrist. You've already seen it on mine. So his wrist is a little smaller, probably about eight inches where mine's nine. So it looks, what do you think? Does that look too big? Yeah. It does. So we'll compare it to his normal watch, which is the Garmin VivoActive 3. So quite a bit different. So if you have about a size 8 wrist, that's what the watch is going to look like on your arm. But overall, it's been a good watch, right? Battery life is great. Think about that grilled cheeseburger Paramount It's a mashup food, is that what you said? Yes. So what is it a combination of? Real cheese and a cheeseburger. Yes, he, he's been looking forward to this forever. Food just arrived, so I'm gonna take a break. But what I was saying is it does have a timeout feature. So if it doesn't sense any movement, then it will just turn off the screen at night. So if you did wanna sleep with it and track your heart rate, it turns off the screen to save battery power, which is a really cool feature. So I'm gonna leave it on the dashboard and see if I can get it to time out for us while I eat this delicious corn dog. Time to eat, Paramount? Yes. Yeah, let's let's turn off this silly machine. Ciao. Ciao, see you soon. That run earlier and the battery life was pretty good. Uh, I'll show you what it is hours later. So now the battery life is down to just four bars. Based off my experience, this is gonna last another day, day and a half. 
at most maybe three days, and that's with heart rate monitoring. And just like that, the days turn to weeks, and then the weeks turn to months, and now we're in December. Uh, I apologize you had to wait so long for that video. I still have the Casio G-Shock GBD H1000. The naming structure, the nomenclature that Casio chooses, hmm, puzzles me. Anyway, I have more to talk about. That's why I kept it. I just finished a battery test. This is what it looks like when it goes completely dead. And I did some more workouts with it, which I'll share in another video. But I think the only one I'm watching right now is the Paramount Kid. So yes, let the credits roll. Goodbye.